A reading from the book of Isaiah, chapter 12, verse 2. Behold, God is my salvation. I will trust and will not be afraid. For the Lord God is my strength and my song, and he has become my salvation. With joy you will draw water from the wells of salvation, and you will say in that day, Give thanks to the Lord, call upon his name, make known his deeds among the nations, proclaim that his name is exalted. Sing praises to the Lord, he has done gloriously. Let this be known in all the earth. Shout and sing for joy, O inhabitants of Zion, for great in your midst is the Holy One of Israel. Good evening. Our theme for the final day of this novena is with joy you will draw water from the wells of salvation. One time when I was a parish priest in a particular church in another country, I proposed to the pastoral council that we might renovate the church as the congregation kept growing and we needed more space. But that also provided the opportunity to renovate the sanctuary. I found three different artists to create an alternative plan for renovating the sanctuary. The parishioners naturally had been consulted at every step of the plan, and so accordingly, the three plans for the sanctuary were displayed publicly, and we asked for feedback. Privately, there was one that really moved me and excited me. In it, the existing life-size cross at the back of the sanctuary was to be changed to reveal real water flowing from it and running into a channel around the cross in a continuous movement. I immediately thought of the marvellous fresco in the Basilica of St. John Latrim in Rome. Here there's a giant mosaic in the apse of the basilica where two deer with antlers are bowed to the ground, drinking water from each side of the life-giving cross. The basis of that image, of course, as you can imagine, is in the Old Testament. Like the deer that yearns for running streams, so my soul is yearning for you, my God. A beautiful thing. But like you, I also thought of the heart of Jesus crucified, struck by a lance, and scripture telling us that blood and water flowed from it. I quote from John. But one of the soldiers pierced his side with a spear, and at once there flowed blood and water. Well, in the Gospel of John, just as the dying breath of Jesus released the Holy Spirit, so too he saw the water and blood that came from the lance in the side of Jesus, representing the waters of baptism and the blood of the Holy Eucharist flowing from the side from the heart of Jesus. By the way, the plan that I mentioned that I preferred, it was rejected by the congregation, but that was okay. After all, they were the people who were going to fund the whole operation, not me. In the Bible, the experience of living in the desert and the experience of living in a hot, arid country with little rain gave rise to fantasies about having abundant sources of water simply because there were so few wells and few rivers that managed to last the whole year round. So it's not surprising that the Hebrew people always imagined there was a pure life-giving river in the Garden of Eden, depicted in the book of Genesis, which fed all the trees and plants in that wonderful garden. With joy, you will draw water from the wells of salvation, now begins to make sense. But where that actual quotation comes from, Isaiah imagines a future day of great homecoming, when every exile will return. He breaks into hope, breaks into song. The days of suffering will surely come to an end. The consolation of the Lord will come. 
Here in this vision poem, the life of God breaks out to support our life, like water from a fountain in a desert place, flowing abundantly to us who were dry and empty. That life is full of mercy and compassion, as we've been hearing almost every day of this novena. And this life truly slakes our thirst and satisfies all our longing. Again, let us look at the Gospel of John. On the last and greatest day of the festival, Jesus stood and said in a loud voice, Let anyone who is thirsty come to me and drink. He who believes in me, as the scripture has said, out of his heart shall flow rivers of living water. Now he said this about the Spirit, who those who believed in him were to receive, for as yet the Spirit had not been given, because Jesus had not yet been glorified. What was the backdrop to these words? Well, it was this. For the first seven days of the Feast of the Tabernacles, the priests would draw copious amounts of water from the pool of Siloam and bring them into the temple to be offered to God as a symbol of the abundant kindness of God who they begged each year to send the vital rain needed to water the plants and the crops. Two weeks ago at Mass, at weekday Mass, we read of an incredible river that flowed from the right side of the temple in the vision of Ezekiel and flowed so that it came higher and higher and higher. Do you remember the charismatic hymn, O let all who thirst come to the water, which again is a quotation from the book of Isaiah. It evokes the same idea about these living, flowing waters from God. Many of you listening this evening, I know, love the devotion to the Sacred Heart of Jesus, which emerged from the visions of St. Margaret Mary in 17th century France and the custom of the nine first Fridays. Can you see now how this devotion has its basis in these scriptures and in the words of Jesus? some of which I quoted this evening, but there are many more. In more recent years, we've seen how Pope John Paul II, now Saint John Paul II, renamed the second week of Easter as the Sunday of Divine Mercy. The reason he did that? He in turn was inspired by the vision seen by Saint Faustina in Poland of our Lord showing rays of mercy coming from his heart. Again, can you see the connection, the deep roots all of this has in the Bible and in the words and behavior of Jesus. So, how are all these images, these visions and Bible quotations connected? We believe that Jesus has created a permanent connection to my heart and his heart available for all by the power of his death and resurrection and glorification. This is indeed good news and such a terrific source of hope in a time of coronavirus pandemic. For when I am lost and feeling lonely and isolated, when I'm missing my family and friends, missing the wider church community, let us remember he has made my poor heart and your heart beat to the rhythm of his heart through our baptism. He has united himself to each one of us. His divine life and mercy flow from his heart to you and to me. He alone can make that possible and has made it a reality. He has made my heart and your heart a place where he dwells and a source of life. He offers his spirit continuously to you and me. Yes, we Catholics believe in the Mass preeminently and in Holy Communion, but this is a fact that is always a reality. It's always happening in our prayer and as long as we are alive. He is present for me and you always to draw life. I came that they might have life and have it to the full. Again, another quotation from John. So, to sum up, 
We can say with Isaiah, with joy you will draw water from the wells of salvation. This is the basis of my hope and your hope. That no matter how difficult life can be and how painful, God in Christ has a human heart that endured this difficult and painful life but died and rose again to be the source of our life and our hope. He has bound himself to us irrevocably. Deep now, deep in the mystery of God, there lies miracle of miracles, a human heart, completely united to God and united to me and united to you. That is the heart of Jesus Christ, our Saviour. I know of no greater source of hope. God bless you.